Welcome to an epic tour of luxury and entertainment at the Chateau Eminence. Today we'll be touring this stunning 12,000 square foot, multi-million dollar home in Woodworth, Louisiana. Atlanta Home Theater provided each room with automation, including this gorgeous private pool and hot tub that is equipped with electronic shades for complete privacy. This magnificent home has it all. And wait until you see the $1 million Star Wars home theater, complete with a hallway of Star Wars figures, a massive lightsaber collection, custom backlit posters, and a blast door that opens with the push of a button. Get ready to be wowed by this state-of-the-art flagship Death Star Home Theater. Atlanta Home Theater installed a 20-foot wide, 260-inch diagonal Seymour Excellent screen. They installed a 10,000 lumen projector, a complete Wisdom Audio speaker system, Trinov Altitude 32 processor, Mad VR, Kaleidoscape, and programmed all of the automation throughout the home. This massive 14,000 cubic feet theater room has 12 theater seats plus a custom emperor's throne. This is an extensive tour including an in-depth interview with the homeowner, so be sure to stick around to the very end. Well, it looks like we're back at it again, Michael. But this time, instead of you flying down to come see me, we flew to come meet each other. Here we are in beautiful Woodsworth, Louisiana. You know, obviously me and you, we've toured the home, but you know what? You haven't. So we want to take you through this absolutely incredible home. This is one of the biggest projects that we've ever done at Atlanta Home Theater. So let's walk in and let's uh, take a look. I'm going to show you something. There's some cool stuff in this house, Alex. We're looking at about a 12,000 square foot home, single floor, and it only has two bedrooms, right? Yeah, so you know what that tells me? What? If there's only two bedrooms and 12,000 square feet, one of two things, either the bedrooms are really big yeah. or this house is meant for entertaining. Exactly, and I think the latter is the answer. So speaking of entertaining, we've got a lot of rooms in this home that people can gather, enjoy sound, enjoy some peaceful relaxation, and crank up some tunes as well. So tell us what we've got right behind us over here. Absolutely, so you know, the homeowner, like I said, they are just end entertaining. You know, right behind us, we've got their indoor swimming pool. Absolutely incredible. I mean, this is the size of an outdoor pool, but inside. But inside, what we did was this. Everybody likes their privacy. Yeah. You know, one thing about Atlanta Home Theater that most people may not realize is we don't just do home theater. We do all things automation. Mm -hmm. So actually, in this room to the left, this pool room, we've done all the smart lighting. We've also done all smart shades. So certain times of the day when the owner wants their privacy, they hit one button, boom, and shades come down. They have complete privacy. Nice. So as we go through the home, I wanna show you a few other really cool things. You know, and another thing we did over here is we did whole house audio. Mm -hmm. So we have small aperture speakers throughout all the hallways and all the bedrooms. But one other really cool thing is a lot of the bedrooms, they have full on theaters. Yeah. They have 5.1 systems in these bedrooms. But this house is very unique in its style and its taste. I mean, outside of just the, the beauty in this home, we've done all the tape lighting, you know, and it's all by American lighting. Mm -hmm. But one other really cool thing that most homes haven't done, you've got to see this over in, their, in this coffee area, we've actually lit the quartzite on the table. Yeah, check and that out. And we as well. Isn't this unique? I've never seen anything like yeah. that. There's so many things in this house. And that's one thing I loved about this client. They wanted everything. Mm -hmm. Like, they wanted no stops. This, this, this client, he is a techie. Yeah. But he really knows what he wants and he understands it. So that makes things not only easier, but it makes it more fun because this partnership that we've had, you know, throughout this, this long period of time we've been doing this project, it's, it's been very natural and very easy. And it's, you know, he's been learning things from us and we've been learning how he likes to live. And we've been trying to incorporate that form and really integrate that into his lifestyle. And so this was kind of a tight budget. I know, not budget, but a tight um, time span for you guys to kind of come in. But y'all came in and cranked it out and you've done an incredible job. Every room just seems like it's got perfection written all over it. Well, I'll tell you what, it was, it was easy because we had a great collaboration from the homeowners team as well. 
he's got some great guys down here who were helping us with the build out, mm -hmm. helping us with the electrical, and we all worked in tandem. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the way it really is sure. most of the time. I mean, without teamwork, you don't really get anywhere. You know, so we had, he had the right team in place for us to, you know, kind of be that complement to and to bring the automation. And that's, like I said earlier, that's one thing that we just, we get it right, we do it right. Well, speaking of doing it right, he loves Star Wars. I wanna take you guys in here and check out this is kind of the small home theater before we get into the big home theater. So let's step inside here just real quick. So Alex, tell us a little bit about this space. You are correct. The homeowner loves Star Wars. I mean, he's loved it, you know, since he was a kid. I mean, this is what he kind of grew up on. So if you kind of look around here, of course, you'll see the Star Wars trilogy posters, the Revenge of the Sith poster, and actually from Atlanta Home Theater. We wanted to personally give him a gift because we know that this was something that was near and dear to his heart. Yeah. So this is actually something that we had commissioned for him. So this is a full painting that we had done by our artist, Lee Bivens, absolutely amazing artist. And he did this all by hand. Isn't that amazing? There's so much detail, like I said, in this whole house. But we've got beautiful artwork. We've got Yoda down here. We've got Darth Vader over here. We're going to see Star Wars memorabilia kind of all throughout this home. Even when we went out to his studio, he's got Star Wars out yeah. there. He's passionate about movies. He's passionate about Star Wars. And he's been following this franchise for probably since the inception, since the beginning of that. But we've got, what kind of speakers are in here? So this is Triad. Okay. So these speakers are all from the brand Triad. Yeah. Um, Triad is one of the companies that we've been working with a long time. Absolutely amazing sound, it's a point source speaker. So it's a bit different than you know, what we've implemented in some of the other rooms. Sure. You know, just because the homeowner, they wanted a different taste in yeah. every room that yeah. they had. So we wanted to be able to deliver on that. It's kind of like a different experience. I mean, we've got a, a really a home theater in here. A lot of you guys might have a living room set up. This is really what that represents. We've got a TV, we've got some in-wall speakers, cool subwoofers, but I'm really excited to share this next space in their home. And that's the Star Wars home theater. So let's take them in there. Let's take a look at all the components and we're actually gonna sit down with the homeowner. He's a super cool guy. You guys yeah. are gonna love him. Yeah, and I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. This theater is out of this galaxy. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. But I think, you know, to really get a good appreciation, we need to walk you through not only the theater, but even the hallway because there's so yeah. much detail. There was so much love and passion that went into this. And I mean, I can only imagine, you know, being in the homeowner's shoes, how many sleepless nights he went thinking about how am I going to make this work and how am I going to bring these ideas to life? Because I'll tell you what, his ideas, they're larger than life. Yeah, so for sure. So let's, let's take a look. Let's take a, a, a walk down the hallway and see what we find. After you, sir. Thank you, man. All right, guys, we've got the lights on in here so that you can see us. But normally when you walk into this space, the homeowner is able to hit a button on his control for from his app and it creates what he calls the show. And that dims the lights and it creates this really cool ambiance like you just walked into another dimension. So kind of tell us what we've got going on in this space in this foyer walkway. Of course. Now, the great thing about the homeowner is he went and he compiled and composed all of these different sounds and everything from Star Wars and he, he sent them over to our engineering team and we actually implemented them into the theater. So that way we can go ahead and as, you, as soon as you open the door, guess what? You start to hear those Star Wars yes. sounds and everything. So you hear everything that comes from like the droids and the robots and you know, kind of everything Star Wars. But what I wanna talk about and look at is all the details, right? Yeah. I mean, even look at the details down to the American lighting that's that's in here that makes this glow. And you see all these different Star Wars characters from Boba Fett to Emperor Palpatine to Darth Vader. The homeowner went above and beyond to make this the absolute best and most epic Star Wars theater, again, on the galaxy. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's, this is impressive. Wouldn't you say so for yourself? When I walked in here, Alex, no lie, I've never seen anything quite like this. I mean, the, the idea of creating intricate details, even on the ceiling. I mean, I really feel like I'm walking into the ship. Oh, I agree. And you know what? 
even when you look up, look at all the piping and look at the wiring. Yeah. There was so much detail because a lot of people would think that this wiring is is not actually being used. No, but all of this wiring is actually used inside That's the awesome. theater. That's awesome. Isn't that something else? And so, I look at all the wall paneling. Yeah, over here now, he was telling me earlier that even some of these pieces came from old camera equipment, like the fisheye lens up there. I just found that so super, super cool. And even computer parts. And so he was an integral part in the design too. It's like he had this vision and Atlanta Home Theater just kind of helped him put that together. Yeah. He's extremely creative. I mean, when you look at this wall of all these parts and controls, you know what, you, would, you wouldn't know that they were all, you know, kind of, uh, you know, put on and I'd say, I'd say kind of recaptured, you know, that, that youth of the equipment and put it up here, so to speak. Sure. So, I mean, initially when I first actually walked into this room and I'm seeing all of this equipment, I'm floored because it all looks like it, it was meant to be here, almost like you purchased it and Absolutely. this is what it was supposed to do. But this is all just reused parts. Yeah which I absolutely love. And I mean, the way he even used everything and we put the lighting together on our Control 4 units mm -hmm. to kind of integrate, it makes it look more like you are actually on the Death Star yeah. and walking into it. Yeah, it fits really the vibe and the theme of this, even though this is functional parts of the theater room that we're about to see, but it really looks like this is part of the gadgets and stuff that run the Death Star. You know, before we talk about one of the really important areas, I want to kind of take your attention over here yeah. to all these lightsabers. I mean, what would a Star Wars themed theater be without all the different lightsabers? For sure. I mean, isn't this absolutely monumental? I mean, each one of these is different. I mean, there's at least, you know, 13 or 14 different lightsabers. Sure. And he was telling me, he said, Michael, up at the top, there's room for one more. And there's a certain one that he is looking for. And I believe he's definitely going to find it. But these are really cool hilts, man. They just got so much character, so much detail. And again, it just sets the stage for, man, we're about to enter something super, super spectacular and very, very creative. Yeah, this project was just so special. I mean, everything about it was just it, it, something it, really just from a movie. Yeah. I mean, it's not something, I mean, this is not an everyday thing. You no. don't always get a call and say, hey, I want to build a Star Wars theater. And, Initially, when you get a call and, you, and somebody says we're going to build a Star Wars theater, you're thinking, well, this is going to be fun. Sure. But this is not what you're expecting. Yeah. Uh, I was not, even the pictures that you sent me, I was not expecting this. I mean, right behind you, you've got this beautiful display of all the electronics that powered the whole house audio that we talked about earlier. Yes. But then also all of the equipment for the theater room. So kind of tell us about some of the components in here. Yeah, I think so. So let's go ahead and do a rundown. You know, um, if anybody's seen the home theater that was shot at my home with Michael before, you'll actually notice that we've got the same amps over here. They're the ATI amps, and all of these ATI amps are to power inside the theater, all Wisdom line source speakers. So all the speakers from, from Wisdom that are ear level are all line source. On the front sound stage, you'll have Wisdom Sage Cinema line three speakers, and they're all powered you know, 500 watts per channel on each speaker. Right. And then we have 200 watts per channel on all the rest of the bed layer speakers, which are Wisdom L8Is, like I use in my theater. Sure. I love Wisdom Line yeah. Source. I mean, I think it gives some of the richest sound in the industry. And I think when it comes to Line Source technology, it is, it's something really special. And if, if you hear it done the right way, I promise, it is one of the most epic things you will ever hear in your life. You know, and what they didn't hear, I'll tell you what, it may be one of the best on the planet. There's no well, doubt. Well, let yeah. me take that back. Galaxy. Maybe the galaxy. galaxy. Absolutely. So let's do a run through with some of the other equipment. So as we as we kind of go down, you know, you'll see we got the crown amplifier. We also have the mad VR video processor. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, this is the best video processor you can get. This is probably the best video processor you can get in the last decade. I mean. You can go into doing anything from 3D LUTs. You can do any kind of geometry correction sure. on the screen, um, especially on big screens. Sometimes, whenever you're putting the projector image on, it can be very tedious. You know, you can have some kind of overhang, and Correct. it's never really perfect. Yep. So the homeowner wanted everything to perfection. So that was one of the reasons that they they reached out to us, and we said, if you're going to buy anything for video yep. processing, it's got to be the Mad VR. 
Some of the other items, uh, well, the other pieces of equipment that you'll see over here that you may not have seen before is this Ascendo amp. Mm -hmm. So we're running two big Wisdom Audio STS subs. Those subs, they require a lot of power. This is a 10,000 watt amp. Man. And that's a lot of power. That is a lot, but they're massive subs. These are huge, huge subs. Oh, they love the power. They love the power. And you know what? And we delivered the power. You know, one of the other pieces is the audio processor. Yeah. My opinion, best audio processor ever made. This is an in-game processor, buy once, cry once kind of processor. Sure. You get this, there is no better processor. Turn off out to 32 with 32 channels available. And below that, everybody's favorite video source, Kaleidoscape. Yeah. So Michael, there's one last thing I want to show you before we walk into this absolutely amazing theater. And it's this battery backup system. Okay, it is it's massive. It is very big. This thing is 14,000 watts. But you know what's really good about this? This battery backup system is so good. There is no humming, no hissing from the equipment. So when you walk into the theater, it is extremely quiet. I mean, the noise floor is so low. You cannot hear anything at all. Yeah, we experienced that when we came in. He had everybody be quiet, and he said, what do you hear? We didn't hear anything. No. And some of us were standing right next to the speakers, so there's no hiss out of that. That's pretty cool. Now, one thing that most people don't get a chance to see, this is beautiful on the front side, but Atlanta Home Theater, y'all don't do stuff halfway. On the back side of this, guys, it's incredibly detailed. It's almost artful because yeah. there's so much time, so much energy, there's a lot of passion. And it takes skill and expertise. My back of my rack does not look anything like this, Alex. So this is super, super cool. We see the back of this massive uh, power supply here, but we've got all the equipment. And it's just really, really nicely done, but it's also lit up very, very well as well. Well, I can say that we take our racks very seriously and we like to make them really pretty because also they, they do a lot of things. It makes it easy to service. Sure. And also, you know, for the client, when they go back and they see it and they see how, you know, how clean it is, they really have an appreciation for that, you know, because I mean, a lot of our clients, they are extremely particular, yeah. you know, and they want things to look just right. So we want to make sure that we deliver on everything that their expectation is and we actually go above their expectations. Well, they look super tidy. Well, guys, I'm ready to take them inside and show them this incredible home theater. What yep. about you? I think we should go in. So guys, we are in a massive home theater. Alex, I've never had a home theater featured on this channel that's quite this large. What do you think? Dude, I know what I think. This is the most incredible ridiculously over the top home theater I've ever experienced and shared here on my channel. Alex, this is a massive room. Tell us how big we're standing in. So this is like a small commercial theater. This room is 35 feet long, 25 feet wide, and 16 foot ceilings. And because the room is so big, you gotta have a big screen. Absolutely. 20 so feet wide, <laughs> 260 inches on the diagonal, see more acoustically transparent screen. I mean, this gives you a perspective, guys. I mean, I'm six foot, and this screen is wall-to-wall, -wall, gorgeous image, and we're gonna talk about that image. What are we using to cast this beautiful picture that we're seeing here? Big screen needs a big projector with a lot, a lot of light. In this room, we went with the Sony GTZ 380. This projector puts out 10,000 lumens of light, and you need that much light to get good HDR on a 20 wide foot screen. Yeah. This thing is absolutely huge. But let's not just talk about that. We've got an anamorphic lens that's attached to that projector because we're filming on a Cinescope screen. This sure. is, I mean, this is one of the larger Cinescope screens we've done. I mean, 20 feet wide, like we discussed, yeah. 260 inches on the diagonal. But one of the other things I wanna kind of discuss that we touched on, you know, out in the hallway when we were kind of going through the uh, the control center to get to the theater is the speakers. Behind the screen, we have three Sage Cinema Line 3, which all of these uh, speakers from Wisdom Audio, they're all modular. So, you know, if the homeowner decides, he can actually add more modules if he needed them. But the speakers actually go from almost the bottom of the screen, almost right to the top. So they cover everything. Nice. Yeah. 
So kind of going around the room for the bed layer speakers, we've got all L8 eyes from Wisdom Audio as well. So we are running 11 bed layer speakers, two subwoofers, and we're also running six Atmos speakers from Wisdom Audio. Well, I'll tell you what, Michael, I think my time here is done. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with the homeowner and let you all have at it so he can tell you about the story of how he came up with this grand idea. I'm not your father. Youth man is your father. Charlie, how's it going? This has been incredible. Number one, thank you. Yes. Thank you for inviting me into your beautiful home, man. Your home is gorgeous. Your wife's been an amazing cook today. Absolutely. She's been so hospitable. But this theater is unlike anything I have ever experienced. Thank you. First of all, I know that chair is not super comfortable. It's more meant for decor and design, but I wanted to start here because this thing is pretty iconic. Tell us about this. Well, the chair had to be made for strength, durability. Um, we wanted the chair at first to be able to house a mannequin and we were gonna put the emperor in it, but my son Chase said, no, let's, let's leave it open for when guests come and they can sit in it and take Instagram pictures. Nice. And I said, well, if we do that, we're gonna have to lock it down. I'm mm -hmm. I can't have it rotate and hit anything and break anything, so sure. we're gonna lock it down. And it's gotta be strong enough to hold uh, everyone. So I went out on eBay and I searched for the Emperor Palpatine's throne chair and I found the uh, one six authentic Star Wars scale and got it in. Paid a lot of money for it, by the way. <laughs> it was not cheap. Right. And I turned it over to uh, my team and, and showed them how we're going to build this chair exactly what they see. Yeah. They looked at me like I was crazy. And they go, you serious? Like all these curves? We're going to build all of this. Yep, we can do it. Be thinking about it and let's how we're going to pull it off. So my team basically come up with an idea for the wood part. I had to reach out to a metal person mm -hmm. because the base pedal is a uh, half inch aluminum plate with a, a nine inch uh, aluminum pipe to be welded to it and it has a, a jack plate on it sure. that the base sits to, so it's gotta be strong. And everything else that they made in the chair is all wood. Uh, we ordered bendable plywood, and it's been multiple layered, and probably three or four cans of Bondo uh, <laughs> wood filler primer right. uh, was, was utilized to sure. get it to smooth out because it, it had to maintain this this emperor look which we all think is metal yeah so or so it had to maintain the slickness of it but at the same time we also had to deal with the seat the the fabric the actual panels the the piece above me sure. the shroud and the flashy lights over here so all of that was measured to scale and you just measure the model and then you times it times six mm. and that gives you your measurements and we started focusing on the headpiece and, I, and I'm going to tell you something, Michael. They built this chair with this headpiece, and one, dot, one day an architect came by, and it was in the shop, right. in, in our workshop, and he jumped up and sat in it, and he hit his head, and it was like, it was like this, and he goes, this ain't right. You know, this is not going to work. People are going to hit their head. Right. And I, we measured the chair, and I go, we're so stupid. The actor who plays Palpatine, he's a short actor. Oh, no. So they built the chair based on uh, Ian uh, McDermott, right. his height. Oh, wow. And we scaled that. Right. And we had this whole piece made. So we actually had to extend the height of the, of the cap right. to allow for someone that's six foot five sure. to be able to sit in it. So uh, the painters had a blast painting it. Me and my assistant, we worked on the fabrics mm -hmm. and we did the upholstery work ourselves. Uh, we built all of this chair part and the lighted greedy parts all in my living room on the other side of the house. And then when the chair was brought in and placed up here for the first time, it was like this crazy um, event where everybody had to come in here and look at it and take pictures. Yeah, for sure. We had to take the chair in two pieces to come apart mm -hmm. and it had to be packed 
by four people sideways and we had to turn and take one of the doors off the hinges but we only had a quarter of an inch on each side wow. to get it in that airlock doorway yeah it was amazing well this whole thing is amazing and so charlie i'd love to have you kind of we'll go around this room because there's so much character so many intricate details like you described that so detailed and the key is you wanted this to be an accurate representation of that star wars franchise and what you see when you watch those movies and so let's give them a tour of all these cool spots in this home theater so charlie here we are at the very entrance of your theater and as soon as you walk in we got this cool contraption so tell us about this control panel this is our master console for the theater room and really there's only three things on here that really function sure my touchscreen air conditioned remote by april air and then my control for touchscreen mm -hmm. and then this one button right here that you see that's actually to open the door right all right everything else is fake it's now a friend of mine gave me an old video production video switcher mm -hmm. and i took it all apart so i took some of the buttons here and we changed them around right. i used the joystick yeah and the t-handle we pulled from that. Some this piece here and this little square guy came off an old R2D2 kit. Oh wow. Um, the this is from the old mixer. And then this panel right here, this is parts from R2D2, full modeled kit. That's, That's cool. part of his leg and right. his ankle. And there's his shoulder pieces that came on. We also used these end pieces right here. Yeah. The galaxy edge is lightsaber boxes that you buy we cut the ends off and we repurposed them that's so cool and we mounted the leds and they're running on arduino systems and also there are two pieces up here i pulled off from an old ari battery system right that was an old camera system that we don't use anymore these two black greeblies here those guys are very special right those are the insert in from uh, a big box store mm -hmm. that has the uh, bits for a router. Okay. So the router bit actually sits inside there right. in the package. No way. And one day we looked at it and said, we got to have it. That's going to work perfect. Yeah. So the console was invented. It gave us some controls, mm -hmm. some look. Sure. It also, this, this Greebly box here actually can come off mm -hmm. with two screws. It gives me access to my motors that drives the airlock door because you have sense. to have access to it. Nice, because once you do that, that's kind of permanent. So being able to have access to that, that's genius. On the opposite side over here, we have a space window. Mm -hmm. Now, my son, when he drew these pictures that you've seen, yeah, he goes, we want to, I want to implement a space window. All right, and I'm like, Chase, I like windows, but they're hard to pull off because I want it to look legit. Yeah, I searched for the cheapest, largest TV monitor I could find. Mm -hmm. Didn't have good luck. I needed a window so much size to fit between the columns. So sure. I have fooled with fiber optics before. I, I, my last theater room, we, we put 400 in the ceiling. Okay. And I know, what, I know what it takes to do it. Let's do fiber optics. Mm -hmm. But I had to look for a paint. So I found this black 2.0. Okay. It's a really, really black paint. It's special. It's water-based, and we put it on MDF, and it was primed, and we painted it. Then we, and we had this laid out right on the ground floor of the theater right. room, and we drilled 250 holes. Oh, my goodness. And then we had to feed the fibers. Sure. And as you can see, the fibers all had to be fed, and then the first one we done, we used a, uh, a type of, like, super glue. Mm -hmm. We didn't know, but the super glue melted the fiber optics. Oh, no. <laughs> The chemicals in it melted every right. one of them. Oh, wow. And they laid over and bent and came off. Wow. So we had to drill all those out, start all over, mm. and it's put more fibers in. And we found another product that we were able to use to hold it, which is basically a, a silicon. Right. And that was born. Then you have to put that up and you got to protect it because mm -hmm. you have to go layers. You got the back layer, mm -hmm. it's got to be covered with plastic. Then we went and cut out the MDF of the windows. Now this is a two-piece sandwich between uh, Lexan. Okay. And then you have to cover it and protect it. Right. And 
we had this piece that we use off of R2-D2. That is awesome. You shared that story with me. Yeah, the, the, the company that I would bought the whole full scale from, I guess during the uh, pandemic, the company went up, mm -hmm. didn't make it. I had half the parts, never could get them in touch again. So I didn't want to throw the parts away. Sure. And I said, Chase, I got to repurpose them in this room. Yeah. Let's put them around the room as fun. Nice. Like Almost Disney. like Easter eggs. Well, Disney has their little marks all over for you to look for. Yeah. Like hidden Mickeys. Yeah. Let's do, let's do some hidden R2 parts. That is so cool. So, Charlie, here's another piece in your theater room. It looks really cool, but there's actually some good functionality. Tell me about that. One of my friends came through and said, man, you got only one way in and one way out. That's correct. What would you do if something happened to your... Your amp racks. Yeah. It's a lot of electricity coming in there, a lot of current. What if it was a fire? What, what would you do? And I go, well, I don't know what I would do. I'll get back with you. <laughs> right. So the next day, I went out. We found that leftover piece of pipe that was from the theater room. And we got some MDF. I had two or three more parts left over from that R2-D2 kit. Nice. And you're actually looking at the round pieces on top or it's from his battery packs. Okay. And I believe the little square pieces are from his, uh, around his uh, dome. And we basically put that on the MDF, painted it, and pulled the top off, Mike. Okay, is it screw or? It just, pop, just pops off? straight off. Lit. So if there's ever a fire in the amp rack, I can grab that, I can open the door, and I can spray the rack. That's awesome. And I can get everybody out safely. So Charlie, one of the biggest aspects of a home theater, we can have all the coolest gear and all the gadgets and all the greatest speakers, but if you don't have proper acoustics in the room, those speakers aren't going to do themselves justice. And so, but I'm looking around the room and I don't see any quote acoustic panels that you normally see in a theater room. So tell us what you've done that's a little bit different, but really serves two purposes. So I haven't done one thing. And I say that because I am not an audio engineer. I do like to watch YouTube videos. I mean, that's, that's all I do yeah. is just watch YouTube. And I've watched a lot of people talk. I've read a lot of uh, manuscripts that professors have wrote on acoustical sound waves and energies. And I've tried to read some of the math formulas for it. Mm -hmm. And there's a principle behind everything. So you were talking about diffusion. Mm -hmm. And absorption. Mm -hmm. So in here, I had to sacrifice. I thought I was going to have to sacrifice yeah. because I really wanted this Star Wars theater. Yeah. And with all this hard surfaces, you know, is it going to be a problem? I don't know. But I do know that I want the room. Yeah. It once me and my son divide. Once we come to a vote, it's going to be a Star Wars theme. Then I told him, then we will have to sacrifice maybe sound. Mm -hmm. But I was told that the trend off can work with some, I don't want to say horrible surfaces. Yeah, not ideal situations, but yes, it different can, it, challenging. It can take a, a, a bad area and make it better. Yeah. And, and I was hoping that that would work yeah. for me. Yeah. So basically for me, I was focused more on proof, soundproofing mm. because I knew this was a lot of pressure in here sure. and a lot of energy. I didn't want, want to upset, obviously, the wife. Yeah. And listen to you people at home. We all know what it's like <laughs> having sure. 18 trillion subwoofers in your house, and you don't want to make your wife mad. Yeah. But then you have the neighbors. Now, my neighbors are kind of distance from me. Sure. But I didn't want to make them mad either. So I focused on soundproofing, and I ended up using a 2 by 6 studded wall, uh, cellulose, mm -hmm. have, and I not blown in. It's hand stacked in, okay. stuffed, and we took a two by four on on a uh, another two by four like a T, and we actually dump the bags of cellulose. And I went around to my small town. I have three big box stores. And we bought every bag they had, and right. and we're talking two hundred fifty two hundred fifty bags. And so we put the MLV up on the first layer, and it's four feet strip all the way around, and we left about six inches off the top. So we could peel it back and we shoved it in there and packed. 
it was so thick that it actually made the rubber have a slight bulge about okay. a sixteenth. Right. And that's when you know it's going to be perfect. Yeah. Then we did that all the way up. Mm-hmm. All the way in the back and in the, in the back. I'm backwards right, right now. Right, sure. The back and the front. And we put the rubber on the ceilings. Mm-hmm. The ceiling is blown with cellulose later. Pretty thick. And we had to do another layer of of MDF. So we went on top of the rubber with a one by four stripping mm-hmm. and that was shot in. Then we came on top of that with three quarter inch MDF. And I went with MDF, Michael, because I, I had read a lot of stories that MDF is a great board for sound. Mm-hmm. It's also a great uh, density uh, to take energy and, and reshape it. Mm-hmm. So some of the things that I was looking out there was that sub frequency is so low, like 20 to 30 to 35 hertz, that it's a tall frequency. Right. And it's it could be 33 feet tall. Yeah. And our goal is trying to take all that energy and bring it down as it's passing through your, your walls. Mm-hmm. So the goal is the more material you can pass through of different densities. Right. So if you had MDF, sheetrock, uh, say uh, soundboard, okay. air gap, air is, is pretty decent, sure. and another medium, which would be the rubber, right. then cellulose, then you got the house brick. Wow. Before the house brick, there's even another layer of, uh, on this house, we went on with a new product. Okay. And um, it's a, it's like an OSB stranded board, but it's been encapsulated and sunk into like a, like a, like a wax, Mm -hmm. it's waterproof. Right. And it's waterproof all the way through and through. So, and it's made by uh, Zip Corporation Mm -hmm. called Zipboard. And so we have Zipboard, brick, MDF, cellulose, uh, MLV rubber, which is a quarter inch, and another layer of MDF. And then you have the actual wall, Greebly's, which is a panel of MDF, and then all the panels on top of it. Right. So... We achieved it. And let me tell you, with this theater rocking out that yeah. you've heard, you just go down in the hallway to like right outside. You don't, sure. hear, you don't hear anything. Yeah, Y'all were in here jamming earlier, yep. I believe, listening to a couple tracks. I didn't know they were in here demo until I started yeah. coming down the hallway. And I'm like, oh, wow. And they're at full, they're at full strength. Yep. So I, I, I pulled it off. And, and that is a great uh, testament mm-hmm. for people out there in this world that want to do it themselves. The MLV is ex- is expensive, mm-hmm. but I do believe it's part of the strategy to stop that energy. Yeah. Very important. But the panels, so we, they ha- Atlanta brought in a sound guy, Chuck came yeah. in and he first walked in here that night before he checked in and we were all talking and he was listening to his voice Natively, right. I can tell. That's sure. what yeah. a sale man does. Yeah, absolutely. He wants to kind of get a lay of the he land. He goes, you know, this is going to be a good one to tune. You know, yeah. I don't know about the bass, but I can tell you right now what I'm hearing with mm-hmm. my voice. All of this raised yeah. MDF is actually diffusing the sound. And I mean, it is quiet. Yeah. So when he ran all of his tests in here, I understand that, and I wasn't a really allowed to be in here much. Right. I only came in on the breaks. Sure. But he told me that the frequency sweeps that they were doing on yeah. the test mics on all the side fields and the mains were out of this world. Yeah. I mean, incredible. So the Star Wars panels from the movies uh, actually helped to scatter that. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a crystal ball. Yeah. I mean, a mirror ball at the right. dance floor. You yeah. shine a light, it, the light hits it, and the light goes out into 200... 50 pinpoints of light. Well, that's what you're trying to do with the sound at a certain frequency. Yeah. So diffusion, I, 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 it is what it is. Yeah, sure. I mean, and, and I knew that we would take a chance and see, and, and it paid off. I will tell you another thing I've learned when you're kind of doing this yourself. An STC rating mm-hmm. does not cover 30, 25, 60 hertz. I got you. It stops at 125. Hmm. So when you hear contractors say, you know, my walls are rated at this, you throw that out the window. Hmm. That's conversations and hair dryers 
and car horns. Right. But when you have massive subs yeah. tickling down there in that low range, you've got to stop the energy or it's going to get out. So Charlie, yes. you mentioned earlier your son. So he helped you design this room, yes. draw it out, and then he and you and probably some others hand cut all of these panels for your, is it called Grableys? In the Star Wars world, it's the, the panels are not necessarily the Greeblies. Greeblies, okay. Yes, not the panels, because that's iconic placement panels from the old Star Wars movies in, right. in the movie. Right. But some of the, maybe we ought to have an episode on just Greeblies. That'd be cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, it's Chase, my son, is very talented, and he's, uh, he he's with went to school, got his degree, he's in graphic design, and and he's always worked beside me in my production company and doing all of my graphics. So Chase and I went, well, well let's go back to the architect, mm -hmm. Jeff Burns. Jeff Burns designs, when we were doing the house plans. Yeah. This room was always this size. Right. It's, it may have been mirrored and flipped on the other side of the property, mm -hmm. but it's always this scale of room. Because I knew that I wanted a three-level room. I knew that I wanted a big screen. I knew I wanted big sound. Yeah. I wanted to hold some more people, and more people than what I used to hold in mm -hmm. my old theater room. And I was going to do a modern room. Yeah. But we went out to Los Angeles to Galaxy's Edge when it first opened. Yeah. And went through that, and we were blown away. I mean, even in the bathrooms, we were heavily detailed. Yeah of Star Wars, so, sure. and we were just in, in heaven in there, walking around gawking, taking millions of pictures, and we, I'll never forget, we were sitting there eating that night at Disney, and he goes, have you considered, maybe we ought to do a Star Wars themed theater room, and I'm like, no, it's not happening, Chase, we're not going to do this, it's too much work, all right, he let it go, a couple months later, we were in Orlando, and we were able to get on the ride of resistance. It mm -hmm. had opened. And we went all through their, their queues. And yeah. he goes, how about now? Because they have a lot of this. And I go, well, I've been thinking since we were walking through here, looking at the queue and all the walls, maybe we could pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, he said, well, I'll draw something. So he went, he went in his program that he plays around with. And he actually drew the columns, the walls, the ellipticals. The uh, every panel that you see, he, yeah. he went in and drew it, and he had a left wall, a right wall, and a rear wall. Well, the, the emperor's chair and the emperor's window wasn't originally in it. Right. We were putting that in the hallway when you first come in, okay. where the bust are at sure. with the control four. That right. was the emperor's was going to be the emperor's window. He said, "I got an idea. What if we move the emperor's window from the hallway to the back of the room?" Yeah. And I go, "Well." Doesn't it kind of take it away from the launch bay? Because that's what this is. Right. We're in launch bay on Death Star. He goes, yeah, but you know what? It'll be okay. You know, the hardcore uh, Star awesome. Wars fans, they'll be okay with you having it kind of blended in here. It'll be fine. All right, draw it and show it to me. Let yeah. me see what it's going to look like. And he did. Right. And then he put the space window in on the right side. And I'm like, Chase, this is, this is cool. Like, really tight. Right. But... I don't know if I can build it. I'm not building it on a styrofoam. Right. So let me do some checking. So I made some phone calls to a local lumber company where we buy a lot of our lumber for for the house. And I was talking to him about some uh, MDF, the medium density fiber board, and how much I could get and how thick. And, and I, I remember, I think we had some sheets on the job site and... I built, I mean, and I think I might have a picture mm -hmm. I'll have to dig for. Yeah. Maybe you can put it in. Absolutely. But it, it's a it's a mock demo of like one column in here. Right. It's the, of the Greeley panels. Right there, I used that word I shouldn't have. <laughs> of the Star Wars panels. Right. And it it's, it's like ugly looking mm -hmm. but it showed you the dimensions and the depth of the mdf sure so i and and i put that up and we just nailed it up it was not it, it was it didn't even look good right but it showed my workers mm -hmm. here at the house this is kind of what we're going possibly doing sure 
do y'all follow this? And here's the pictures. And yeah. They were looking at it and, well, how big is this stuff? And I said, well, we'll find out. So we sat down. We went through each piece. Mm -hmm. we, we labeled them. We marked out all the measurements for each panel, for each piece. And I sat here and my assistant, Jeff, we, we pretty much took uh, the whole system and we alphabetized it. So at the top left up here, you'll see, we call it panel A, B, mm -hmm. C, D, E, F. Right. So we actually went outside and we had all those A panels cut. Put that up there. Everything cut out, brought in here, and we put them together. And we're using a special glue with a, a silicon in it so that we could shoot it with a pin nailer. Mm -hmm. And then we stacked them up and wrote on the back, A, left side. And, and one thing you discover when you build a house is that not all walls are the same. Mm -hmm. You know, not yeah. all floors oh, are yeah, the same. Oh, yeah, sure. So we discovered that our distance between our columns were just a little off. So we really had to keep track of the of specifically yeah. which column they were going in. Because believe it or not, there's some places they get a quarter inch off. Right. So now it, we just opened up a whole new can of worms. Sure. Stacking this stuff. And I'm talking this whole upper decks was filled mountains of stacked wood. Right. That we're sitting here shooting and nailing. All right. And then it's got to go up. And we had these uh, lasers set up mm -hmm. that I bought from a box store. Uh, I had them on my old C-stands. Uh, we would put that up with. The, the MDF was all cut uh, by hand. Yeah. We would use a six inch hole saw, four inch hole saw, then a, uh, a Makita cordless. Right. We use a lot to cut our straight. We did it the old fashioned way, yeah. how you would cut an elliptical yeah. out. That's why. And I'm going to tell you, that's not fun. Yeah. And then you got to sand. So I invested in a, a, a quarter drill with a round sanding drum. Mm -hmm. And you would go in there and circle. And then we learned that you could take those panels and stick them together and clamp them down, and you could sand them as one unit. Mm. And you could do them all at one time. Nice. And so everything you see is handmade. Yeah. We learned that jigsaws can't cut MDF. Right. and leave straight edges right. so everything had to be glued and piecemeal together using biscuit joints we're using craig jigs to to go after those crazy angles right once all of that was put up then came in the priming stage of the room and the prime had to be done just right they had to set up a uh, blower system in here that actually had ducts that went out the projector hole mm -hmm. and the guy was in a suit and we had to block that door off. And right. he shot this nasty primer in here. On this, the whole room got shot. Right. And then they came back and sanded it down, and they shot it again. And it's a special primer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a PPG a product, I believe. Okay. And it dries super fast. Right. When it hits the MDF, then came the paint, and then we had a we had a pretty much a gray column room. Then we had all the little details with the space window, the pipes. Then we started putting in the vents, mm -hmm. had to go in. Uh, those pieces all had to be assembled in separate stages. The uh, the black vents you see on the sidewall that have the the little black pieces in them, right. that is actually a bundle you can buy at at a, a Home Depot. Okay. That comes with like 12 of them to a pack. Right. And it's a little oak sticks. And we cut them on a cutoff saw and then the vents are made out of long strips of MDF that were biscuit jointed together. And then we also invested in a, a, a gun that could shoot a waffle stapler. Mm. You ever seen I how have that not. is? No, sir. It's like a, kind of like a picture frame. Mm -hmm. Right. Where it shoots the waffle. A little waffle. sawtooth. Yes. Yeah. But it's a little bit bigger and longer, and it, and it shoots a bigger version of that, and it takes the MDF when they butt jointed together, and it pulls them together and, and, and nails them. Mm. So we had to do that. Um, and we, this, this was a year. Yeah. I never left this room for a year. Right. I mean, I, I, I had pretty much a table set up down front. Sure. That you can see in the pictures that we stayed here. And while I'm trying to build this room, my house is an 18-month build. Right. The theater room was a year. Yeah. Or a little longer than a year. Sure. 
I got people coming nonstop to me with problems in the house. <laughs> right. So I'm having to play the subcontractor right. and play let's build a theater room. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I had a lot of good team members. But my son, super talented, smart child. Yeah. He is good. Well, I think it's amazing just all of the hard work that has gone into this. You are an instrumental part of every step of the way. It's easy just to hire a company like Atlanta Home Theater to say, hey, I don't know what I want. Just come build me something cool and not know how to use it, not know what equipment. But you went through and you picked out everything. I mean, you even started with a totally different brand of speakers. Right. And then you had a chance to hear wisdom and you're like, oh, goodness. I want that. <laughs> I want, that's, that's the sound that I want. This is bigger than what I even knew was possible with home theater. And... But you were instrumental in every part of that. And I love hearing the passion, not only for just Star Wars, but home theater and for this hobby that we all love. So I'm, I've always been a do-it-yourself guy, you know? And I knew when it came to the, the projector, the audio equipment, the amps, mm -hmm. the automation, it's above my league of thinking, mm -hmm. you know? I'm in the, I come from the old school, yeah. classic days, you know? and and. I, I needed help with that. Yeah. But when it came to the theater room, uh, I'm, I'm hands on. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy that's the middle of the wheel that's hubbing. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I'm sitting here working with a set of trim carpenters, working with my two assistants on these panels, I'm also having to sit there and think about I need to order the tape light. Mm -hmm. I need to get the Arduinos. I need to get pipes. I need to get uh, the ceiling tiles. Yeah. You know, I mean, the ceiling tile story yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, for sure. So I, needed a, I needed a Death Star ceiling. And we're looking you, where up. Where do you buy that at? Yeah, exactly. You can't go down to your local box store and say, I would like a Death Star ceiling. Right. What does that even look like? Um, well, it, let me tell you what it is. It is 24 by 24 inch washing plastic trays that they put in professional dishwashing systems right. on a conveyor belt right that you put all your forks and dishes in sure i found that on the website and i ordered them and when we got them all in all 150 of them right we put them on a table saw and cut them in half right all of them we ripped them had to rip them in two sure and put them direct to the ceiling but they look so cool. But it's I bet even acoustically, it. they probably help out again, kind of they, they breaking do, up those they sound do, waves. They, they scatter. They do scatter the, the with diffusion. It does. It does do that. We've thought about stuffing it with some kind of board inside it, but mm -hmm. it's like just let it go. It's the room sounds so good. It really does. And when the the ceiling went in first, I mean, what you're seeing right now with this ceiling, we were looking at that the first thing. We were looking at all the ellipticals in. But we didn't have carpet, mm -hmm. and when the carpet went in, that was it. Yeah, the the room just sealed Changed, down, yeah, big time. And or, originally, as I told you, we right. were putting tile in here. Sure, and that would have been to bad. keep it Death Star. Yeah, that would have been bad. Bad, honestly. Bad. Yeah. And let me tell you, trying to put tile in here that would not have reflection problems mm -hmm. from the screen back yeah. sure. on the image would have been a nightmare. Yeah. And and the acoustics, so. As it stands right now, 100% satisfied. Yeah. I am proud of my team yeah. and my team that of work of, of my carpenters, yeah. Atlanta, and those guys are an amazing job. Yep. And when I went to their showroom and I sat in their big theater mm -hmm. room for the first time, yeah. I thought I had my system picked out what I'm going to do right. until they showed me what they can do. Sure. And I sat there with my head down, and I'll never forget, mm. I was asked, what's the matter? And I go, I got to sell stuff mm -hmm. because I want this. Yeah. I've never heard a room with separation like this ever in my life. I've never been able to achieve my side fields like this. And and in Atlanta, you can't see their stuff. Yeah. It's all hidden. Yeah, it's all hidden in the sides. Yeah, so. and I'm like, I, I I don't understand. By the way, you have butt kickers? Yeah. No? Yeah. No, we have two big subwoofers yep. mounted in the front. And wow. And I was blown away. Yeah. And then it was explained to me about the point source versus line source. Mm -hmm. And I understood that. And 
Michelle and I made a decision, you know, this is the time of our life where yeah. we want to do something and we like doing stuff for a lot of people. And let's 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 pull the trigger on this. Yeah. Let's do it. And then let's have a let's have a great room yeah. while we're at it. Sure. Well, you've got a great, more than a great room, like the most incredible room I've experienced. This, the theme, the style, the heart behind it, the story, and honestly, even the sound, it's phenomenal in here. Like you said, you get great bass. We watched a bunch of demos from yes. Kaleidoscape. You got a huge movie collection. And we cranked it up, and you could, like you said, we didn't need bass or like butt kickers in the chairs. I'm feeling tactile bass. I kind of think I heard a little story. You might even be adding some additional bass, possibly. So, well, if you know, that, you gotta. What, I'm like, I'm like that guy, you know, uh, uh, Thomas. Yeah, you've heard that name before. Oh yeah. Let me feel it to see. No, I want. I gotta hear. It. Yeah. And and if I'm, yeah. but listen. I believe that for for us in life, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to bring people in here, yeah. and I have a network of friends, and they can come in, and and we can be a, a big family, join yeah. and eat, and then go swimming yeah. in the pool, and yeah. come in here and watch a movie, you know, that's the whole world. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely, I love entertaining. Yeah, and and that's what we built this for. So. Would I build another room in the future? No. Hmm. This is it. This is it. This is it. You went because all out. All I in. went all in. All in on the construction. And I believe that we could absolutely up we could upgrade down the road. Yeah. Because I know technology is gonna change for sure. us. Right? It will. And the screen can always come down. Yeah. Um the speakers can always come out. You can put more in. Sure. But the room's always going to be here. Yeah. And we're always going to have a Star Wars. I don't think I'll ever take the Star Wars out. Yeah. It's going to stay. Yeah. It's my heart. Absolutely. 77, 1977, I saw it for the first time, and I was blown away. Yeah. I was in, I have been a George Lucas fan um, and very appreciative of what, Industrial Light and Magic has always done, mm -hmm. and how they've influenced the world, yeah. and, how, and what they did. So that inspired me. If they can do it, and they did it in '77 on a little budget, mm -hmm. technically, why can't I do it? Because all you gotta have is good artisans that can have, work with their hands. Yeah. And in this small town we live in, we have them. Yeah. We have great electricians, carpenters, trim carpenters. Tile layers, we have it all right here in this small town. And they did an outstanding job. And putting up with me. Yeah. Charlie, it's yes. been phenomenal. Yes. Guys, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope it's inspired you. Of course, this thing is massive and huge. And you may be looking at it saying, Michael, I'll never have anything that big. I want you to hear the heart. I want you to hear the fact that he had a vision. He assembled a team. He did a lot of the work himself. And he made something that his friends and his family can enjoy for years and years to come. I want to give another huge thank you to Atlanta Home Theater for making this trip possible. We're going to be doing more collaborations just like this home theater tour in the near future. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Now I'll have a link to Atlanta Home Theater down in the description below. And as always, you guys be blessed and may the force be with you.